In the last video, I discussed that how you can integrate your Swift UI application with HealthKit, and we were able to display the steps for the past week, as you can see. Right now, our steps are being displayed in a list control. But wouldn't it be great if we can display our steps in the form of a bar chart or a graph? So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can display a bar chart with our steps and the dates. So let's go ahead and get started. Right now you can see that everything is the same. We haven't really modified anything. The only thing that we need to change is that in terms of or in place of list, we should be using some sort of a graph. Now there is no graph control that is built in the Surf UI. So we will have to create it Ourself. I'm going to go to shared and going to add a new group and I will call this views. Inside the views, I'm just going to go ahead and add a new view which is going to represent the graph. So make sure that we select Swift UI view so we have a place to start. And now I can simply say graph view. So this view will be responsible for displaying us the graph. Let's go ahead and check out our canvas and you'll see that in the canvas obviously it's simply going to display hello world because we haven't really written any code to display anything at this point. Now the one thing that the graph view will need to take is the number of steps or the array of steps that we want to plot. So I'm going to go ahead over here and say steps which is simply an array of steps which is a model that we created earlier, which is right here. Let's go ahead and stop the build. Okay. Now, since the graph view is dependent on steps, in the graph view previews, we need to pass in steps. These steps can be some sort of a dummy steps if you want. So let me go ahead and create an array of the dummy steps that we can pass. And there we go, these are steps. And now I can simply pass in the steps over here. So I can say steps and I can simply pass in steps. Perfect. Obviously we're not really doing anything with the steps right now. We're simply trying to pass in the steps so that it compiles the app. Let's go ahead and see what our preview looks like, which is simply going to display a text view for now because we haven't implemented anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we will do is we will start with a H stack. And the reason that we're using H stack is that we're trying to create rectangles inside uh, as a graph and each rectangle will be serving as a graph. So it means that we can simply go ahead and say rectangle over here. And I can go ahead and fill up the rectangle with a particular color that I want. So red color is fine. And I can go ahead and set the frame of that particular rectangle, giving it a particular width, let's say 20 is fine. And height would be, let's say 100. So you can see that this is how we will be creating our graph. But obviously we need to be dependent on the steps that are being provided to us. So we have to run some sort of a loop. So I'm going to go ahead and run a loop over here. This will be a for each loop. We are going to be looping over steps. The ID that we will be using will be the ID column in each step. And this is going to give, give us access to the step instance inside steps. Inside this for each, we can return views. And the views that I'm returning right now is rectangle view. So you can see that I have a couple of steps over here, maybe like five or six, and the graph is also created. Okay. Now the graph height, which is the bar chart height, this part is dependent on how many steps you actually took. So if I go ahead and change this, if I say step dot count, you'll see that sometimes I'm taking a lot of steps, like thousands of steps. So this property will come up to be very, very high. So if I even wrap this with CG float, 
you'll see that this will go like crazy because we are trying to give a height of 3,400 and even 12,023. So that's not going to work. So we have to come up with some sort of a algorithm that can decide what is a maximum height. For that, I'm going to go ahead and create over here a something called a y value, which is just a variable name. And I can say swift.min. And when you get the step, so step.count divided by 20 and take the minimum one of those. So either take 300, so 300 can become like the maximum height that we can plot, or it will take this one, all right? And now we can go ahead and simply put the y value instead of sub.count. And this is going to allow us to refresh the graph. And you can see now the graph is much better. You can see that over here, we have 123 steps, which is represented by this very small graph. So it looks like it is working correctly, but we still have to align our graph and it's not really aligned. Well, the horizontal stack can take, consists of a property, which is called the last text baseline that we can use to align all of our graphs. So there we go. Pretty cool, right? And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's how you will create the graphs. Now, obviously, if you want to, you can go ahead and create some other stuff also. What we can do is we can make sure that our rectangle is inside a V stack. And we can go ahead and add text to it. So I'm going to go ahead and add a text to it. So let's go ahead and add text. These are all just basic steps that I'm taking so that we can display the number of steps. You can see that the background I'm using white. Uh, white is not going to work obviously because white text or white is not going to be visible. So what I'm going to do is a couple of different things. I'm going to go ahead and set the frame and everything. So let me go ahead and set the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and check out where this edge stack actually ends. And I'm going to set the frame to be maximum. And you can see now it's like that. Okay. Now, obviously, this is not completely correct. There are some steps that are missing. So let's go ahead and fix those things. The first step that is missing is that we also want to display the date part of it. So let's go ahead and display the date. And date should be displayed right underneath the rectangle itself. So I'm just going to put the rectangle right here or the actual date. And for the date, I'm going to use a formatter, like a custom formatter, which is date formatter, because I only want to display the month and the day. So I'm just going to add that custom formatter right inside the graph view. There we go. Perfect. Let's go ahead and try it again and see how that allows us to display the dates or not. All right, let's see what's going on over here. Let's go ahead and run this. Here we go. It was just a refresh issue, but looks pretty nice, right? Now, it will be nice if we can also display the total number of steps. But the question is, how should we display total number of steps? And the easy way to display total number of steps is to create a, another property. I'm just going to create a property called total steps, which is going to be integer. Now, we already know that the steps array contains instances of the step structure which contain the count of that particular date. So we just have to sum them together. So I'm just going to say steps dot map and I'm going to map over it. Map is going to return the actual count of the steps and then we can use the reduce function to perform the addition. There we go. And now it's turned to display all of those steps. So I'm just going to put the edge stacks inside a V stack. And I believe this is the for the V stack. So I'm just going to move these properties on the actual V stack. All right. And finally, I can go ahead and display the total number of steps, which can be easily displayed by using the text view. There we go. 
Let's go ahead and save it and refresh our preview. And we will wait for the preview to be refreshed. And there we go. Total number of steps are 22,044. And this is how it will look like. I think it looks really, really good, right? Now, one of the things that we can do is if the steps are greater than, let's say, 10,000, then we want to indicate it with a different color, all right? So if the steps are more than 10,000, so over here, we are setting the color, which is, let's see, where are we setting the color? Right over here, we're setting the color. So I can say over here, if the step dot count is greater than 10,000, then go ahead and use the color dot green, else use the color red. And there we go. So you can see that now the one of the colors is now uh, different because that is more than 10,000 steps. And it's a clear indication that on that day you did good because I think 10,000 steps are the kind of like the minimum that you should take. Now, right now, I'm just going to change this to 1,000, which is bad because I'm running it on my iPhone. And on the iPhone, I haven't taken that many steps. Let me go back to the content view. And we will try to run this. Uh, we will make sure that we are using the actual graph view. So I'm not going to use the list anymore. I'm just going to use the graph view that we just created. So graph view and going to be passing in the steps. That's it. Let's go ahead and build this. All right, good. And let's go ahead and run this and see what it actually displays. So this is running on my actual phone. And there we go. These are the actual steps that I have been taken. Now, I know they are very less <laughs> steps, but the main reason is uh, I don't really walk with the phone or wearing the watch. So that's why it's getting the steps only when I have my phone or my watch on. Watch, I never wear it, but the phone sometimes. All right, so there we go. It looks pretty good. You can see that it is displaying and if the steps are more than a thousand, it is uh, running it with different color. It is displaying it with different color. So in this video, you learn that how you can display your health kit data in the form of a beautiful graph, which give you a much clear picture of what exactly is going on. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to support my channel, then check out the link in the YouTube description, which goes to the Patreon page. Uh, you can become a Patreon and support my videos continuously. Uh, you can already know that it's a lot of hard work goes into every single video that I create. It takes a lot of time to research and to create those videos and your donations are very, very uh, appreciated. If you also like, you can check out my Udemy courses. I have a lot of different courses on Udemy. You can see that I have courses on server-side Swift using Vapor, Swift UI course, which is the best-selling course on Swift UI, MVVM design pattern, and the list just goes on and on. And I'm always working on some new courses also. So if you want to support my channel, this will be the best way. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoyed the video.